All right, so now let's what's the best way to go through our photos and actually, you know, analyze them. Personally, one of my favorite things to do is up here, notice where it says Essentials. If you click this arrow and you change the workspace mode to Light Table, it's really cool. It goes to all thumbnails. And then you can make the thumbnails a little bigger, something like that. And you can get a really good look and scroll through your photos pretty quickly and have a nice thumbnail size. That's one way I like to do it. Another way that it works really well is this preview mode. And this one I like because the picture is really large and it works pretty good. So, and now check this out. Notice how I, my thumbnail has a plus there, my little mouse pointer. It looks like the zoom tool. When you click that, you can zoom in and this thing will load a 100% preview. It's really cool. So you can see if your image is sharp or not. And that's a great feature. It's really cool. Like, so I can check this out and see if that's sharp. You know, sometimes when you do with these macros, you miss it. You miss the focus by even a, a hair, and uh, it looks sharp on the camera, but in reality, it's not sharp. It will take a second to load, depending on what your PC is doing, because it's got to render a, a you know 100% preview, and there it is. So it looks like I got it. The head is sharp, perfect, pretty cool. And then, if you want to see a full screen mode view of the image, you can simply just hit the space bar at any time, and that'll bring up whatever image you have selected and put it in full screen mode. If you hit space bar again, it'll go away. Another really cool way to view stuff is up here you have the full screen preview, which is spacebar we just did, but I really like this review mode. Check this review mode out. This is really cool. And you can just go left and right, and it'll kind of pan through them in like a cool, uh, you know, circle. It's, it's really cool. And if you hit the down key, it'll get rid of the photo. It won't get rid of it, it'll just deselect it. So basically what it did is it selected all the photos. If I, if I hit the escape key, Notice how here in the content panel on the left, everything is now selected, except for this image right here. And that's the image that I hit the down arrow on. Let me show you. I'll do, I'll do it again. Check this out. Go back to review mode. And let's say, all right, this one's cool. This one's cool. Um, I don't want any of the, I don't want this picture, that one, that one, that one, that one. All right, so we got rid of a few. Now we have much less in our little carousel here. So I'm just going to click the X button to get out of here, or you can just hit the escape key. Now notice how I have a whole bunch of photos deselected. See that? So now that they're all selected, I could uh, you know, assign them a keyword, for example, and, and that keyword would go to all the images that are selected. You know, things like that. It, it's just a good way to narrow your selection so you can maybe put a label on them. Like, all right, these are, you know, second, uh, second approval. So they're all going to be yellow, you know, because they go with that they're this part of the wedding album design for example say you have you know at a wedding you have the bride getting ready so you can put them all in yellow and then you have the reception and so on so there's many different ways to categorize and and it works really great and now notice once you add a label over on the filter panel another sub panel pops up so that says label and then you can just click that and you'll get all your labeled photos really cool now I want to show you a couple more things here about this um, preview window which is really cool Notice how if you have multiple selections, if I hold command down on my Mac or control on a Windows machine and I select two different images, they both come up in the preview window. See that? I just keep clicking and more and more come up. Pretty cool. So if you want to compare two images, you know, like is this one better than this one, for example, things like that. Another very cool feature. So I just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that one. Also, up here when we looked at before where we had all these, uh, when we went to the light table feature and stuff, uh, there's a bunch of different presets, I should say, and the film strip one is pretty cool. This is like a standard one that's been around in Bridge forever, and a lot of people like that one. So I just wanted to make make you aware of that. Also, if you really want to, you can drag this out. I mean, I don't see any reason to, but it's just little things like that that uh, make Bridge so powerful. Um, there's there's so many things you can adjust. So one other thing I wanted to show you is if you go into Adobe Bridge, and let me just show you one other thing over in Preferences. There is an option in Preferences that I recommend you change, and I'm going to show that to you right now. If you go to General, I think it's under General. Well, here's one option. When, when a camera is connected, launch Adobe Photo Downloader. That's up to you. I don't use that because I use Lightroom for my importing. However, that's an option you may or may not want to check. Also, the user interface brightness. I like to bring that down a little bit, and then the image backdrop as well. So I don't have my, I have mine a little bit darker than default. So when you open up Bridge for the first time, it might not look exactly the same color, you know, because mine's tinted a little darker. I just wanted to show you that. Also, here, if you go to thumbnails, 
you can you can tell it to not process images larger than a certain size. This is important because if you're working with monster files like huge panoramics and stuff, they might be bigger than one gig. So you might want to change this if you want Bridge, you know, to display those thumbnails. So keep that in mind. Playback for uh, video footage, that's an option you might want to play with. Metadata, this is really cool. You can go through here and select which options of the metadata you want to show or don't want to show. So if you're just interested in specific metadata, you can uncheck all this stuff and then your metadata panel will be a lot more organized. And that's pretty cool. Now this other option here I wanted to tell you about this file type association. That's just, that's, you know, pretty common sense type stuff. What program is going to open what file? So if you double click on a file in Bridge, depending on what kind of file it is, what program is going to open it? That's what this means, just so you know. So you can change that around. Like for example, if I double click an AVI file, it's going to use my VLC player in order to open it. You might want to, you might want to use, uh, you know, Windows Media Player or QuickTime or whatever the case may be. So that's where you would change this type of stuff. But cache, this is the option I highly recommend that you check. Automatically export cache to folders when possible. Make sure that's checked. What that'll do is it'll write the cache like as far as the ratings, the stars, the labels you may or may not have, but any changes that you make in Bridge as far as your files go, that information is stored in a little, you know, sidecar file type thing. And it, they call it cache here. So what that'll do is it'll put the cache in the actual folder where your pictures are. So if you were to drag that folder onto another drive or whatever the case may be, the, the information will always be there, you know, if you brought it to a different computer, for example. Otherwise, Bridge will just have one master database with all this cache in it. And if you do go and take your pictures and move them from one place to another, the cache isn't going to be there. So if you plug it into computer B, for example, all the ratings and star information is not going to be there. So very important, and I always have this checked. There's an option in Lightroom as well, just like this, and I have it checked in Lightroom as well. So uh, I just wanted to make you guys aware of that. And then uh, there's a couple other things here which you may or may not want to use. Like I said, I really don't change that many options in here, but there are a few. And this cache one is key, and so keep that in mind. That pretty much wraps up the intro to Bridge. In the next section, what we're going to go over is we're going to show how you can open up a file in Photoshop, and then we're going to head over and show you Mini Bridge in Photoshop, pretty much just like Bridge, except it's actually built into Photoshop. It's really cool. So we're going to check that out in, in the next movie. So stay tuned and have a good one.